having difficulty earlier. Now we're on board with No Borders Radio, um, as well as right here on Revolution Radio, and we're also simulcasting on Tier uh, Nassar tonight. Um, after I got the um, word right without killing it, uh, I know that the other day I was quite uh, off my game. So, going into Joseph Biden and Patrick Leahy, you know, those, those two alone, I could fill up thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of just griping and whining and moaning and everything else. Okay, but I will just simplify. There is the Crimes Against Children Act that Patrick Leahy authored. It's known as CACA, CACA. This goes hand in hand with, um, oh gosh, who was under uh, Reagan at the time, the uh, Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, CAPTA. Okay? They're, they're getting copious amounts of funding for tricking out and trafficking your children. Okay, the banking schematic is, is swung in the bank's favor. And all of these agreements are under, and you could read them yourself under the Emergency Banking Act of 1933. If you just simply go to 12 USC and start reading, you'll see it all in there. Now, the attorney oath is not under... Uh, 28 U.S.C., which is the Judiciary, since the 1789 Judiciary Act. The attorney oath is under the banking aspect, under 12 United States Code, subsection 73. Now, what they're doing is they're trafficking men, women, and children through a banking schematic globally. Congress got global governance in 1941 with the Atlantic Charter. Even prior to that, they, they had basic global governance and what they did was they entered into contract with many many more under the united nations charter these corporations came in they got some big money going on to to provide then for the development that you've seen since 1941. now part of that is you know everybody has a beef against monsanto monsanto is an arm of the united states congress those are the corporations that went bankrupt in 1933. Now, since that bankruptcy, they went under protective status. Congress came in as a trustee of its own bankrupt state. And human beings ended up in the holding corporations. Microsoft is one of those. Doesn't matter when it was created. It's trafficking and trading on debt notes. Those notes have serial numbers that match you and your actuary accounts. How long you're going to live, what your education is, um, what your health is. That determines the debt that you can handle. And that's what your assignments are. And that, that's the whole system of, quote, credit. So you go in and, and, and facilitate an assessment, assess a value on a, on a house or whatever else. The mortgage that comes out of that, that's a dead pledge. You become a dead pledge, a pledged asset to discharge congressional bankruptcy under the Devonshire Participation Program. That same pledged asset, you can get there by assignment as well through the criminal industry, the medical industry, psychological industry. An attorney is the one that's assigning you under that attorney oath under 12 U.S.C. subsection 73. It's all in banking. This is global. It doesn't have anything to do with anything else. And um, it needs to stop. Everybody needs to stop patronizing this thing. Going back to Joseph Biden, he's the number one pedophile of this whole entire schematic. Patrick Leahy is number two. Now, Ted Stevens used to be number two. 
They killed him a few years ago and then killed the prosecuting attorney that was prosecuting him because he got caught with building the bridge to nowhere. And that was a senator in Alaska. And then you have the underlings, which is such as Rick Perry, the governor of Texas at that time. Uh, this Rick Perry character, he's traded as the Department of Health and Human Services. He's traded as the general counsel on Dun & Bradstreet. What is the Department of Health and Human Services? If you go back to the 1947 National Security Act, National Security Act, this is securing four nations, not securing states, which is the human being. 1947 National Security Act made sure insured the security of corporations and declared the citizen or human being the enemy of the state. And the related fallout of that, the National Security Act created the National Security Council. Under that, Henry Kissinger came in advising the National Security Council with Memorandum 200, 1974. He advised the National Security Council that depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. Foreign policy simply means communication between two or more foreign states. 1975, Kissinger's Office, the Office of Population Affairs, was created. That is the Department of Health and Human Services. You see it from the other side, what they're presenting in Hearts and Minds. That's a war tactic. Winning Hearts and Minds is a war tactic. To get you to agree with depopulation, to get you to agree with all of this policy, to get you to subscribe to it. Subscribe means underwrite. You are the underwriter. To get you into the shoot. They are offering you what is known as sticks and carrots. They will give you food stamps. They'll give you medical insurance. But they're the ones that are making you sick. They're the ones that are controlling the inflation rates through the International Monetary Fund's control of all known currency, the scarcity of all known currency. So through fourth generation warfare, they're applying all the pressure all of it, financial, economic, social, criminal, psychological, all of that pressure is coming from that government. The hand of which is Joseph Biden, Patrick Leahy, Dianne Feinstein, Barbara Boxer, John Cornyn, Johnny Holdren. These folks walking around in the 1960s they were writing such as the population bomb now, this is to present to you that you guys are all useless bread gobblers then they separate you and tell you well black is not good brown is not good Iraqis not good Muslims aren't good Christians Catholics and once they pit you then you agree with the depopulation program That guy over there is just not as good as you are. Or that girl over there, well, she's poor. She's a different classification, isn't she? They rely on you being pit against each other. That's a depopulation program. And all the while, every one of you is being offered hearts and minds. Veterans benefits, Social Security benefits, welfare benefits, food stamps, food banks. WIC programs. These things are there as a design to get you to buy into it. They need you to consent to being killed. Otherwise it would be called murder. These folks are very, very, very not intelligent. They're very, very evil because they're psychopaths. They're missing the frontal lobe. They're the thing that can count human beings as objects. They're not human. 
the human being is the, the evolved species. Uh, the psychopath is missing the frontal lobe. Absolutely, it's not there. It's gone. Missing. Now what happened was you, the human being, you evolved. And of course the psychopath got jealous and designed a way to control you. That control is called law. The etymology on the word law is to lay down. To put down. Now in Greek and Latin, Jesus means your earth. So using the law, they've laid you all down. Jesus. And once you realize what's in that book, right? I mean, if you're laid down, you're the lamb that's been tortured and cleansed in your own blood. You've experienced all these things. You've been washed in the blood of the lamb. Tortured day after day through fourth generation warfare. Once you, the lamb, is able to open that book, that's when you get pissy. That's when you finally stand up and you stop calling that thing your father. Now, if you read the entire text of the biblical text, or where it stems from, I mean, this thing comes from the Homeric hymns, um, Hesiod, you can go back to the Gnostic texts, and it's all there. You know, they've designed such a, such a good schematic. You know, if you read it yourself, and it isn't interpreted by the psychiatrists, which are priests, just like Jesus said, Woe unto you, priests, scribes, and Pharisees. He included all of them. The media, scribes, the priests, psychiatrists, and priests, and the Pharisee. Pharaohs of the sea. Well, who is a pharaoh of the sea? Attorneys. That banking oath, 12 U.S.C. subsection 73, says that the attorney is not hypothecated, but its subject is... That means that that thing is acting as and walking around as a Lord God. If it has subjects, it's a Lord God. That's the thing you're asking to represent you. And it is. It's not representing you. It's calling you something else. A negotiable instrument is one of those. Now, it's not a nice thing. However, this is all Roman law. Rome never went anywhere. It just changes faces according to market conditions. You can go back to the Treaty of Westphalia and find out that at that time it was called France and Germany, Austria. Rome is now called the United States of America. Because the United States Incorporated happened to be the winner of Roman law at one point. So here we are. Now, Rome is burning, it's on fire, and it needs stuff to discharge its bankrupt state as owing to the United States of being, globally. If you're a citizen and you're patronizing that thing, it's going to grab you first. Don't patronize it. Get out of the way and, and let it fall. Let it burn. Let it burn. Last night, uh, Bo was on the Bo and Rocco show, and he was talking about India. So we'll go to the Z News, ZNews.India.com, and he was talking about a clerk, court clerk recruitment scam. Uh, suspended judge has been arrested. All of these things are very interesting. But earlier this week, what had caught my attention personally was that within the last month, twice now, once the administration and once the ex-wife and in-laws were charged with abetting, abetting suicide. Now India is neck and neck with this quote suicide rate that's, that's almost equivalent in the United States Incorporated of male suicides. In the United States Incorporated, every single year, 35,000 males are said to be committing suicide. 
And in India, where you have a populace of 2 billion or so, you've got 55,000 male suicides per year. Now, when you look at the actuality of that, the United States Incorporated is well beyond the, quote, average rate of suicide. And um, the reason that India is so profound, and I speak about that more um, recently to watch as things are occurring there, is because India was supposed to be the new, quote, America. Now, the United States of America, quote, Congress, had entered into trade agreements with India, China, and Korea. Korea has, of course, the, quote, natural resources because they are the Pyongyang project. India was supposed to be the new America. China, they had maintained and they've been maintaining their populace on um, equal footing. Everybody's middle class. Now, what that means is that India's populace was going to be the new producer for the world. Congress had decided years ago that that's the way it's going to be. However, we started teaching in India about, I don't know, 10 years ago now, 9 years ago. And ever since then, we have watched and, and listened carefully to what is going on. Because if this didn't stop in India, it would have actually backfired. No matter what we did anywhere on the globe... If the attorneys were still able to maintain the Indian population as the new human resource, it wouldn't have mattered what we did because they would have had enough funding to go ahead and decimate United States Incorporated. Just like they did in Nazi Germany and just like they did with uh, Pol Pot, uh, Cambodia, just like they did in Vietnam. You know, all of these things. And so we've had to you know, go back and forth, back and forth, teaching, teaching, teaching. And it took a lot. I mean, their, their attorneys uh, from the United States Incorporated, of course, is through the House of Delegates. They're, they're absolutely disgusting. And to see now that judges and officers of the court are being charged with abetting suicide because of fourth-generation warfare, it's amazing. And especially, again, to see these psychopathic females being held accountable for the same thing. We don't want to see any uh, suicides. But in the United States Incorporated, you know, uh, I think it was three years ago or so, uh, Thomas Ball in North uh, New Hampshire actually self immolated And he was at the end of his rope. He said, look, I've been through family court. I'm at the end of my rope. And in his suicide letter, it was horrifying to witness exactly what every other male that's a target of fourth generation warfare has gone through and he ended up you know dousing himself with a flammable liquid and lighting himself on fire in front of the um oh i forgot which court it was Keene, new hampshire court and um this this is it can't be tolerated by humanity you can no longer tolerate the attorney interceding in all of your states, the attorney promoting civil war, the attorney pitting everybody against themselves and each other. This is decimating the populace. Anyway, so, and that's where we're here, leaving the farm, of course. Um, from the unionleader.com, placed our attorney charged in voting crash contests use of his statements of trial. And this is interesting to see attorney work product doctrine still being used. You know, whatever floats our boat, it just takes up more time. And, of course, it provides a show for him. But um, as all of our listeners know, the minute you grab an attorney and your attorney appears on your behalf to represent you, that solidifies the judgment against you at that moment. It's called cognitive judgment. The rest is just a show. Dancing around and the court jesters or have always been court jesters that's all they are brentwood uh play style attorney charged with negligent homicide is contesting whether prosecutors can use statements he made about causing a boat crash to claim the life of 54 year old merrimack man lawyers for lawrence a buswell jr 53 appeared in rockingham county superior court on tuesday 
arguing at, that their client was in police custody on the night of May 26, 2012, while being questioned at his parents' waterfront home in County Pond in Country Pond in Kingston. Prosecutors say Boswell of Kingston negligently piloted his, piloted his correct craft boat when it collided with another boat piloted by 54-year-old Eric Escaland, who died from his injuries. Buswell faces three counts of secondary degree assault for injuring three other passengers in Escalen's boat, prosecutors said. Buswell, who remains free on bail, has other legal troubles pending in Rockingham County as well. He is expected to go on trial in late July in a separate case on charges of felonious sexual assault for allegedly raping a 15-year-old boy on his boat sometime in July 2011. Buswell took the boy swimming on Country Pond and provided him alcohol before sexually assaulting him, a prosecutor said. On the night of the boating crash, first responders and police arrived shortly after 11.30 p.m. at the home of Buswell's parents who own a campground on the lake, according to court testimony on Tuesday. New Hampshire State Police Trooper Anthony Catabriga testified that he had a conversation with Buswell in a mudroom of the home where Buswell gave a brief synopsis of the crash, Catabriga said. Buswell, an attorney, took a short call on his cell phone and then ended the conversation with the trooper. Quote, he respectfully declined to speak with me. And quote, Catabriga testified Buswell was told by investigators that he could not leave according to defense lawyers. Marine Patrol Sergeant David Owlett testified that he arrived on the scene shortly after 1 a.m. and found Buswell standing inside a garage alongside Catabriga and Ben DeLuke, an assistant county attorney who had been dispatched to the scene. Alette said that Buswell appeared to be upset but made a statement about the crash when he asked what happened. Quote, he told me he had a lawyer. I thought that was a li he was a lawyer. I thought that was a little odd. And quote, Alette testified. Quote, I asked him what happened. He told me he was delivering newspapers and was headed home and did not see the boat when he crashed. End quote. Weird stories. Um, Coming out of Attorney Mouse, of course, now we are seeing Attorney Paper Boys that deliver papers on the water in New Hampshire. Crazy. I guess this is what it speaks of in Revelation. Um, some crazy stuff here. Now, th these things, they cannot be allowed uh, first of all homicide versus murder now homicide means killing of the homo sapien that is the human being that has the frontal lobe and I'm glad in these things to see that he's not charged with manslaughter or another fictional crime. It's nice to see him charged with homicide, and um, as he should be. These these things, these psychopaths, have no empathy, no humanity whatsoever, no compassion for humanity. It's nice to see um, them being charged with, you know, actual actual crimes involving human beings. Now, you know, we didn't see that before. It took a long time to get to this point in time. Very, very, very long time. Sorry about the clicking, folks. I'm trying to open some um, news items as I run out here. I like these tab features, but of course, uh, when this occurs, I usually end up garbage all over me windows. Let's pray that that doesn't occur. From MyFoxDC.com, Montgomery County judge gets protection order against man charged with kidnapping and assaulting her. Now this story I wanted to cover tonight, Rockville, Maryland, authorities in Maryland are searching for a young man charged with kidnapping and assaulting a Montgomery County judge. 
Circuit Court Judge Audrey Crichton, 53, has told the court she fears for her safety and has won a protection order against 24-year-old Rickley Joshua Seti. Montgomery County Police say the attack Monday night on May 19th started in Judge Crichton's driveway in the western part of the county and ended in the parking lot of a Harris Teeter on Dorrance Town Road in Germantown. Well, we'll be right back, folks, after the break. Stick around. Welcome back to the second hour of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station. And if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. We're also simulcasting live tonight on No Borders Radio at nobordersradio.co.uk as well as Tiernasur at tiernasur.com. Also in the UK and Ireland. Uh, it's so beautiful um, to see. Um, hmm. I think that I need to get back to my page. Before the break, uh, we were talking about a Rockville, Maryland judge that got a restraining order against this young man. Um, it, it's just uh, mind boggling. Circuit Court Judge. Audrey Crichton, 53, has told the court she fears for her safety and has won a protection order against 24-year-old Rickley Joshua Sinney. Montgomery County Police say the attack Monday night on May 19th started in Judge Crichton's driveway in the western part of the county and ended in a parking lot of a Harris Teeter on Darnestown Road in Germantown. In court documents, Crichton describes Sinney as her intimate partner and that he had been living in her home for three weeks. In her handwritten request for the protection order, Judge Crichton tells the court, Rick was very intoxicated. He pulled my hair and forced me into my car and demanded that I drive him to get his Gaithersburg. He yanked my head to the side by my hair several times as I was driving, yelling, faster, faster, end quote. As they pulled into the supermarket parking lot, Crichton writes, quote, I jumped out of the car and ran to a nearby store. Police say sending, sending then jumped behind the wheel and took off in the judge's BMW. They say he crashed the car about a mile away. Sending was then taken to the hospital and walked away. Sources say Judge Crichton met Sending several years ago. Several years ago. Now this is a, a young male, 24 years old. And it says she met him while she was an assistant public defender. And he was one of her clients. Okay, so he got into some trouble as a kid. And it looks like perhaps this judge isn't the victim of anything. And perhaps this young man needs community support. Um, because this type of influence is the type of stuff that came out of the Cash for Kids scandal in Pennsylvania a few years ago. Um, these bankers and attorneys, they traffic children to each other. And to see a 53-year-old judge, former public defender, with one of her former clients, which means he was in trouble at one point, and then vilifying him, seems like he's being set up for something, and uh, he needs our protection. These uh, folks, these bankers, are not victims, regardless of what they're trying to claim and maintain. I don't care who it is. I don't care how cute she is. I don't care if she's got big brown eyes. I don't have any chivalry. My interest stems in protecting humanity and humanity only. I'm not interested in protecting bankers and judges in any way, shape, or form. From WPTZ.com, former state senator charged with DUI after crash, police say William Karras crossed into uh, oncoming traffic. This is in West Rutland, Vermont. Former Rutland state senator William Karras was arrested for driving under the influence after Vermont state police say he caused a head-on crash on Tuesday morning West Rut in West Rutland. Police say Karras failed to maintain his lane as he drove south on Vermont Route 133 
he collided with the northbound Robert McMurray. Karras was uninjured in the crash. McMurray was transported to Rutland Medical Center for treatment of minor injuries. Karras was taken to a state police barracks in Rutland and processed for DUI. He's scheduled to be in court in August. Sick. They just continue doing all of these things because they are still being patronized and called fathers. So, of course, they feel like they're immortal and they can get away with all of these things. I'm driving drunk. I have children. They all have children. Your child of somebody else. <laughs> these are sick, sick, sick days. From WYFF. Four.com probate judge charged with attempted sexual battery, Hart County, Georgia. Now, Georgia, Tennessee, is a major hub for child sex trafficking. Of course, it's on a trade route, just as much as Texas, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Illinois. <clears throat> Hart County, Georgia. A Hart County judge has been arrested on a sex charge. Probate judge Bob, quote, Bobby. Joe, and quote, Smith of Hartwell, turned himself in and was arrested Friday. Smith is accused of attempted sexual battery alleged to have happened last Wednesday. He's also charged with simple battery. Smith has since been released on bond. No other information about the incident leading to the charges was immediately available. Smith was in the news a year ago when he was reprimanded by the Georgia Judicial Qualifications Commission for his involvement in the campaign of his son, Joey Smith, for a magistrate judge seat last March. Now, if you go back to the history of Sparta, magistrates were the E-4s, or the overseers at that time. And of course, this whole thing is all sewn up by the Federal Judges and Magistrates Association. You can find that by going to the Federal Judge and Magistrate Association.gov. Check out their website. Learn your history, folks. Like her just never existed. The famous lawmaker of Sparta. That was uh, Plutarch, Plato, all of these other concepts. And, uh, of course, the um, ability and the rise to, quote, fame was their ability to use speech and present to the human populace all of these grandiose ideologies and ideas. Of course, Lycurgus, the concept of Lycurgus, is famous for the Great Red Rock, which is just a big speech. If you want to learn more about speech, you can go and read Leviathan by Thomas Hobbes, H-O-B-B-E-S, written in 1651. And it explains the creation of man, the creation of form and matter in order to control populaces. And that goes right back to Aldous Huxley's uh, speech there at Berkeley regarding the control of mankind through psychological methods. And of course, pharmacology. Um, from abc6.com, ex-Rhode Island lawyer charged in $46,000 FRN theft. Uh, this is last week. I'm not sure if I covered this or not. Um, sorry if it's a repeat. North Kingstown, Rhode Island, AP disbarred North Kingston lawyer has been arrested on allegations he stole more than $46,000 in client fines. State police charged the 65-year-old James Corrier with unlawful appropriation over $1,000 Thursday. Authorities say he was disbarred from practicing law in Rhode Island last year for failing to promptly deliver funds for a client and diverting the money for his own use. Now, disbarring doesn't mean anything. When you, uh, for example, let's go back to your inception. Your mother signs a birth certificate and facilitates the assignment onto the state. That doesn't involve an oath. It's her assigning you. Now, attorneys, however, take an oath to the bar. And in that oath, they're verifying that they are subjects to the bar. They live there, even though that's a fictional government. That oath says that they're, quote, citizens of that thing. 
Now, disbarring doesn't do anything. It's like, you know, handing back a picture of yourself or writing your name on a piece of paper and handing it to somebody. It has the same effect. And until they expatriate and patriate elsewhere, they're still attorneys. I'll continue reading here from ABC6, abc6.com. Police say courier represented a client in settlement negotiations with an insurance company over water damage to his client's home. When Courier received a $46,000 settlement check for the client, police say he deposited it into his client account, but later withdrew the money for his own use. Courier was released on $15,000 personal recognizance. A message seeking comment was left Friday at a phone listed for Courier. That's the end of the story. The interesting things about these client accounts. If you research what IOLTA is, I-O-L-T-A, that is inter, uh, interest on lawyer trust accounts. And what this is is you have a principal balance and they're deriving interest on that principal balance. We spoke and tapped earlier on what a cognitive judgment is. Now the insurance already pays out in the very beginning of a case. The attorney makes the complaint or prosecuting attorney makes a complaint. That's what you see on the back end as that complaint. That's an insurance claim. The insurance pays out on that complaint and the attorneys stick that in I own trust. They're not tax, but throughout the next four, five, six, ten, twenty years as you're fighting this out in court your own attorney is making money hand over fist because it's it's garnering the interest off of that they're not paying taxes and eventually you'll get 0.82 percent which is the debenture participation program and again you're patronizing it if you don't like the way that things are going and you don't like being human trafficked stop asking those things those cockroaches to represent you sick. These things are, are very, very disgusting and harmful to mankind. Uh, this looks like a, a fall guy from the independentri.com. Looks like Rhode Island District Court clerk charged with embezzling $15,000. A third division district court clerk at the Noel Judicial Complex in Warwick has been released on personal recognizances after Rhode Island State Police arrested her last week for allegedly embezzling nearly $15,000 since September 2013. Maria Benison, 46, 400 Woodland Drive, Apartment 402, Coventry, is facing charges of embezzlement over $100 and access to a computer for fraudulent purposes following her arrest Friday. Court cases brought forth by the North Kingstown and East Greenwich Police Departments are heard in 3rd Division District Court. As part of her clerk duties, Benenson was responsible for collecting money from bail commissioners who take bail money and court warrants fines from the defendants who are arraigned by, at police departments when the courthouse is closed. Those funds also include a $125 warrant fee that defendants pay. The State Police Financial Crimes Unit began investigating Benison last April after other court employees reported money was being stolen from court funds. Police alleged that between September 2013 and March 2014, Benison would log defendants' court fines into the court computer system and then keep the $125 warrant fee for herself. The total amount of money stolen during that period amounts to $14,985, according to police. Benison was arraigned Friday in Kent County Superior Court before Judge Brian Stern and did not enter a plea to the charges which is customary in felony cases. The penalty for a person convicted of embezzlement is imprisonment for more, no more than 20 years and a fine not to exceed $50,000 or both. The case will be prosecuted by the Rhode Island Attorney General's Office. Benison next court hearing is scheduled for June 27th. And all the clerks out there, as you can see, this is rampant. 
Now you have been used as a Fall Guy for a very, very long time. This is the result of working for this corporation that needs Fall Guys. Now, as a prime example, in 1927, the Bear Corporation, facing bankruptcy, came into the world courts as a company at Churza. The Bayer Corporation called itself the Republic of Germany. And it asked the world courts, which is owned by Congress, to indemnify Poland. The judge came back, judges, and ordered the indemnification of Poland. Now, that was the Bayer Corporation acting as the Republic of Germany. The result of that was, quote, Nazi Germany. Everybody saw Hitler, but it was also corporate policy, identical to now. This court clerk was just Campbell. She was indemnified by the same courts, the same banks that are slaughtering law enforcement, that are slaughtering citizens using law enforcement. It's just soft sold here. Nobody's up there on a pulpit waving their hands around. You got a beautiful attorney in chief now called Obama. He's completely neutralized. He's not black. He's not white. He's not Christian. He's not Muslim. He's not gay. He's not straight. Can't argue him. Now, Hitler, he presented as a racist, so everybody knew what he was. Now that you got gray Hitler up there, everybody's laying down, not realizing that this is Nazi Germany all over again. It's the same corporations. Now, if you want to learn more about this, Bo was on last night on the Bon Rocco show talking about the Audi Corporation. At the same time, it was doing the same thing, maintaining Nazi Germany. It was the corporations through acts of enablement. Those same acts of enablement that have been occurring since 1802 indemnification convention for the United States Incorporated and related. Now, each act of enablement was called a state constitution. I've got Bo with me. Hey, Bo, how are you? Hail the Fuhrer! Yeah. <laughs> Hail the Fuhrer, the great Hitler! Yeah. It's just, it's horrifying, but uh, we need to get, kick it into overdrive now. I, I need to invent a tool that is, is capable of extraction of the head from the rectum of human beings across the planet. Well, I had teachers years ago that were really good and efficient at doing that, otherwise I wouldn't be here. I know Jeff used to ride me, and he would offend me so bad. And he would tell me straight up, get your effing head out of your beef, and yell and yell and yell. And I would put my head down, and I would throw fits. But eventually, I woke up, you know, and it, and it took a lot to get me to wake up and, and a lot to realize what was going on, you know, because we are innocent. I didn't want to believe all this stuff. This is sick. Well, yeah, I just find it interesting that people can only handle the easier to believe truth in small sound bites. That's, that's all they can swallow. And it's evident by, you know, some of these people who follow gurus and, you know, their legal beagles and, and you know, somebody jumps in there and says, uh, uh, don't claim the name, win the game. <laughs> and no, no, that's not enough. You have to properly divest title and get all your ducks in a row. Okay, I laid it all out there in a row uh, for you in a zip file there at chooseyourside.org where you can uh, get the uh, basics of the uh, the foundation of the public law. And then you have to address all 74s and, you know, you can't just dance around in there like the attorney and say, well, I'm not claiming a name. That's not me. Right. 
Especially if you appear in their jurisdiction. I and I tell them, and then I tell them the truth, uh, you know, and they're like, um, like, wow, man, quit being so negative. Right. Oh, boo-hoo, you're so negative. Good, good luck with all the trolls. I used to throw fits, you know, before you, it was like, well, I don't know. It was, it was, it was really hard when I first started waking up because I didn't want to see any of this. This is horrifying in comparison to what, what humanity is before it's touched by the attorney. We're just innocent. We're absolutely optimistic. We're friendly. We smile. Um, we, we have empathy. We have compassion. And they take advantage of every aspect of our being in order to thwart us from usurping them, from taking over where they've been in control for so long. And, and at, you know, at those times I felt so small. Very, very small, like an ant in an ant farm. Well, it's, it's more than evident if you go back and look at any war, any war, all wars throughout history, okay, millions upon millions of, of human beings have died across the planet over the centuries of recorded history, and they're all perpetuated by attorneys posing as governments, attorneys posing as oligarchs, attorneys as kings, uh, you know, they're all, you know, turning you over to a different landlord, so I call them attorneys, whether they had a bar card at the time or not makes no difference. Right. They're bean counters, okay? And the king had his council, okay? And the council would decide on behalf of the people that, yeah, we're going to have to go throw the males in there, you know, and uh, start this war because uh, they're on the king's land. Farm or the forest. You know, they've called it so many t things. The Forest and Chase's Charters called it a bank. You know, it, it was a bank where all the animals went. That is seven... USC, the, the Agricultural Code, Agrarian Economics, um, you know, it's, it's always been that farm, and, and when it came to the quote, United States Incorporated, or United States of America, the chain of events perpetrated by Congress, it was called a colony, and that's another farm. Colony is a synonym for farm or landed estate, and you know, but when they have these use of words, these words that stem from a patented product of corporation called a lexicon, that means with law. Lexi is the word for law in Latin. That, that, those are all patented. They own every space, even those that don't exist. They're created out of nothing simply by the action of psychiatry and use of these words. Wow, you're really bumming me out. I just want to dance around and not claim the name, and I'm just going to go in there and uh, say there is no state. Yeah. <laughs> After you subscribe to their jurisdiction or underwrite the policy, you're already in their court. You're in the bank. Oh, i got to go in the court. I'll be a bad boy. It's just it's so hard to get across, you know, and... and um, Jesus said it best. He simplified everything and said, divest yourself of all that possesses you. Don't take up any of those titles. It, it's not only the last name. It's every title. You're claiming to be every kind of fiction. Man, woman, individual, Christian, Jew, Catholic, Scot Scottish, um, Irish, Swedish, um, American. You know, all of these fictional titles have a patent holder. Those were the letters patent. Sovereign citizens probably got a letter patent on it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Southern Poverty Law Center really cashes in on that one. That's in their lexicon now, yeah. for sure, thanks to the SPLC. Yeah, sick. Sick, sick. And that's another, that is an aisle to trust in itself, is the Southern Poverty Law Center. They're, they're dancing around there, all charitable, and it's relative to Matthew 27 itself. Governor Pilate always washes his hands in holy water. 
Look at me, look at me. I'm doing this for charitable reasons. I'm not really killing you. I'm killing you softly. So it's different than murder. It's different than genocide. I'm the nice killer. You know, it's just this is sick, 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 sick. Well, they told us they're going to kill us and maim us and send privateers on us and collect their taxes and everything in their own writings. What are we arguing about? What are we crying about? Well, that's something that's hard because nobody wants to read it. I just want a one-page document that uh, some so that I can you know get a template and uh, yeah. put put my name on there and sign it and throw it in and then uh, get my remedy. Right, right. And or I'll just go into court like Rod Class says and say you got those jurisdictions. Yeah. After you give it to them, the minute you're in that court, it's a bank. You are a deposit, and you will be hypothecated as that deposit. That is what forms, informs the negotiable instrument. But like, wow, if we say that, we'll be bumming too many people out. That's just sad. And then? Yeah. <laughs> and that's what bothers me about Rod Class. He, he's, he was so close. It's like, he says, they admitted to be an administrative process. And then you want to, and then what? And then? Yeah, and then what? Okay, then what did you do? Oh, I got them to admit they're administrators. I got them to admit they're a corporation. And then what? And then? Yeah. And then what? Okay, hold them accountable, for, for goodness sakes. You know, stop just hollering about it. I got them to admit this. I got, I got that judge to run off the bench. Okay, then what? Then what? That means that you're only entertained by the show. You, you, the court jester just got one over on you. It was wearing a black robe. It, nothing else happened. Uh, everybody needs to realize these things are just presentations stemming from that House of Gown. The Gownhausen Charter says it most succinctly that the House of Representatives is a marquee. It's a tent providing you a circus. The Broadcasting Board of Governors produces the circus through the CIA which is the producer for the United States Incorporated. It's a production company. You can read about the CIA and the CIA's products in book four of the Church Committee reports, um, supplementary detailed staff reports on foreign and military um, intelligence. Now, intelligence is a product of the CIA. Artificial intelligence is what your children and you are exposed to in the educational program. That's all artificial intelligence. Science is artificial intelligence. Science is two words. It means to grab knowledge, but it's not experiencing knowledge like gnosis. Gnosis is actually actual experiencing knowledge. Walking along and you and you realize, oh, this is a rock. This is a different kind of rock. This is an even different kind of rock. Rather than grabbing knowledge provided to you from somebody else, you, nobody is actually using thought. They're memorizing education. They're memorizing. And that's the, the foundation is in pedagogy. Pedagogy is where the word education comes from, meaning attendance on boys. That is the removal of the firstborn son. That takes you out. That cuts off your knees and your ability to think for yourself by being educated and and so often i run into people who say well i only have my eighth grade education and and they look at me silly when i say thank god thank god i i get phds and, and uh masters of things that come to me and they are so hard to deprogram because they're so indoctrinated yeah yeah i'm saying people that follow these gurus and you know other forms of law merchant that don't have a bar card. Right, right, and, it, and it's easier. There's more relative experience in somebody who's a dropout than there is in somebody who's a PhD, and and that needs to be realized by everybody because the dropout rate is actually quite high. So that means that there's a whole bunch of human beings somewhere that are much, much, much more intelligent than these. PhDs like um, Johnny Holdren, 
sitting up there as a sign, czar and this administration depopulating. Hey, my biggest wake up, I think, um, you know, the final straw for me was, was I wrote a very well written, I thought at the time anyways, uh, judicial review, you know, because the judges were just walking all over me, of course. And, uh, you know, clear hands doctrine was in there, and or clean hands doctrine, rather, and just all kinds of stuff, just pointing out their fraud, and they're like, nope, we don't want this, we're going to throw it out. Right. Because it doesn't matter. It was all in as an infant. When you go into court and you're claiming to be a male or a female or an individual or a father that's Can I be been a hot dog? injured. Yeah, the Hebrew genesis. And that was so funny because, um, you know, Hebrew national is a, a um, kosher hot dog, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's just funny because it's, hi, baby. Um, you know, and, and, but everybody has to go down one or two rabbit holes before they get bitten enough times or burned enough times to realize what's going on. And that's why God gave us senses. He says, you know, if it hurts, don't do that. You learn from your mistakes. And if you don't learn, then, you know, so be it. You're not going to be able to get out of this situation. And, um, you're, you know, Hesiod, uh, one of my favorite quotes, uh, oh, I can't even remember it now how it goes, um, I'll find it in a moment. Now, we were talking about other things, There's stuff going on in India, the aiding and abetting suicide and everything like that, and, um, these things are just, it's profound to see the, the coming in of the public law holding them accountable for these things. Did you cover all the uh, Attorney Shirley Roundup news? Um, you had quite a bit there. I know you covered um, most of the stories I didn't get to yesterday, so that was good. Thankfully. I mean, that's crazy, though. They're starting to round them up, though, in, in large numbers. And especially in India. I mean, that was where they had the trade agreements. That was our. That's uh, important, too, because there's 2 billion uh, human beings there. Right. And that was well, or almost part. two billion and some amount of attorneys. Right, and they say two billion, you know. But we know from, that doesn't include the attorneys, though. I don't think. No, and we know from the 1974 memorandum 200 that they've been depopulating us. Um, their expected results by 2035 was less than um, 500 million human beings on this planet by 2035. And um, in the United States Incorporated alone, we watched, you know, uh, three million a year uh, decrease in not only the cross between the birth rate and the death rate, there's still three million a year that are not being made up for since the 1980s. And, and that was very concerning to us uh, as we've been walking along and, and uh, trying to get our voice is heard throughout the globe because it, it's global. It's not just the United States Incorporated. The Cestri Kvi Act alone, the premise of these things is founded on the use and the vi. So there's a use that gets the benefits and there's a vi that takes up the slack. So say for example, the United States Incorporated is going towards third world um, a third world does not start out like that. It's created by the attorneys and raising it. And so as it decreases in its productivity, overhead becomes greater and greater, then somebody else is picking up the slack. That is the use would be the United States Incorporated. The VI, for example, became India. And so all of those new product were going to um, pick up the slack. And then the United States Incorporated goes by the wayside, exactly like Nazi Germany or, or uh, Cambodia, the Falklands, when they went into Falklands, Malaysia, when they went into Malaysia. And all of these things, it's all designed to go back and forth. And the attorneys never lost a single cent all of that time until now. Now that we're all together, now that we're one, that's what Jesus said to be. We're all one cloth. We're all of the same garment. If you take up a title and you say that you're separate from that cloth, then you're no longer on that cloth. 
you're something else. You're a new species, a new genus, a new stock in the stock market. That quote by Hesiod, quote, Far best is he who knows all things himself. Good, he that hearkens when men counsel right. But he who ne neither knows nor lays to heart another's wisdom is a useless wight. And it's just such a profound um, statement by Hesiod because you, here we are, we have full-on ability to maintain relative knowledge, but it's become so much easier just to listen to an audio book tell us what this or that means rather than experience things for ourselves um, or learn from our experiences. We've been so indoctrinated as a whole, the whole of society, socially engineered society. This has gone so far outside of the realms of reality, it's not even funny because now everybody's acting as, you know, various fictions and, and far and, and beyond what I could have ever thought um, possible. Well, yes, I'm just going to be uh, putting on there in my documents. I'm a practicing Hebrew denizen. Yeah, hot dog. It's a kosher hot dog. I'm a kosher hot dog today. And then? And then? <laughs> you know, we were laughing about that the other day. Who was that guy the other day that was doing that? Um, Craig Kirk School of Law. Um, Craigling Skirt. Head School of Law Education. Yeah. He's just so foul. He's absolutely foul. Oh, he leads back into the Skype room somehow after I kicked him out way back when. Hey, I don't know how they get back in there like that. Oh, agents always have access to all those little tools. And, uh, you know, he's pitching his, uh, his uh, law merchant show on there, you know. It's funny. I don't even remember what it said, but it's just ridiculous on his face because he just, you know, he believes in that mosaic law. He believes in the Hammurabi code. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The sovereign kitty says, no, he's yucky. Yeah, he's yucky. And then? No. <laughs> but, but you're bumming me out with all this, this knowledge. It's hurting my head. It's too hard. I, 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 I don't want to believe it. You should have seen me years ago. I was just so, it's its disheartening when you have, and, and you realize how many patriarchs you actually have. Because I was, you know, I, I pledged allegiance to the flag, and I had this patriotism to church, and I had this patriotism to state, and I had all of these patriotisms, and I was working my butt off to, to provide and, and do my duties and obligations as a good citizen and a good wife and a good mother and a good whatever and um I, I was great great for politics i mean i remember being burnt so many times over and over again um donating my time donating money creating these these things to help humanity and and watching as you know a psychiatrist or, a, or an attorney or somebody pretending to be uh, quote Christian cashed in on on him and demise over and over again and it it took a lot to get me to realize and to see but that experience is something you know I that, that that's what we share that's what we're supposed to be sharing is is all of these experiences so that no one else ever has to go through them again come on down folks and pick your perverted priest <laughs> yeah oh my goodness we got it. Perverted priest Polly? Yes, yes, I'm 63, but hey, 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 bring your kids down to me. Oh, and it's been foul, but this last week they, they nailed a, about seven of them I watched come through. And, you covered and there's a, a shortage of, of Catholic priests. Yeah, that was, that was beautiful to see that they're having to uh, double up on running around the counties now that they're not allowed to be around your children, and I'm thankful for that. You know, more and more are turning away from that schematic. Well, they should let them back in the church, you know, if they're, if they're a known pedophile. But they should have a big sign on them, you know, like, uh, you know, stay away from me, I'm a pedophile. A uh, tattoo on their forehead that says <laughs> that. And it has to be branded there. They need to be branded. Something has to happen to make them stop. 
and something has to happen quickly to show the other pedophiles what happens when you prey on our children. And, you know, I was talking to somebody today about, you know, they should be peeled. And not only peeled, they should be peeled alive in the town square and then rolled in salt. Like what they said at Captain Stern's trial in uh, Heavy Metal. Uh, kill them's too good for them. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We yeah. have the medical industry there. Just play them like a yo-yo. You know, burn them alive and then peel all their skin off and do a whole bunch of skin grafts on them. Get them all up to par and get them back to where they can walk and talk again. And then do it all over again. And keep doing that. And showing them on the mainstream media so that other pedophiles know what happens when you prey on our babies. You know, I'm sure that I just lost a whole bunch of listeners for being so bitchy. But I'm tired of predation. I'm absolutely, absolutely horrified. This is abhorrent to any kind of biology. You know, if, if we were lions and something was eating our children, it would have stopped. It would have stopped. Mice. Uh, spiders. Ants. Protect their children. They, they don't wait around and ask judges for restraining orders. Or take them to school where the daddy state can prey on them. Right. Right. They, they don't vote in politicians. Lions have never voted a single politician into existence. Yeah, they, they need used car salesman commercials for schools. Come on down, folks. Bring your kiddies on down. We'll teach you that there is three separate branches of government and how you have to be a responsible citizen and vote. Absolutely. And, and the, the, the names, they tell you exactly, exactly what they're doing when they, when they tell you to call your children productive members of society. Don't! When you go in and you work in a place that has a human resource department under the Department of Natural Resources, Don't. that should be a red flag. That should be a red flag. But it's been so slow and so with low intensity conflict. The, the war tactic, low intensity conflict under fourth generation warfare. This is so slow and it encroaches on society at a slow rate of speed. And nobody realizes because that's that's part and parcel of urban pacification. Everybody's offered these pacifiers, the, the shiny lights on the top of police cars and law enforcement in, in uniforms and, and all of these things, attorneys dancing around a court. That this is all part of urban pacification. It pacifies everybody. While they're not the, the not law enforcement. Now these attorneys, judges, psychiatrists, counselors, youth groups, juvenile justice, all of these are, are in those positions. Principal agents at a school, variants on, you know, teachers are put there for on purpose, to break the child, you know, first you know, if you look at the schematic, you have kindergarten, first, and second, and third grade, raising your children up, building them up. You're such a good girl, little Sally, little Johnny. You're such a good boy. Oh, that's great. Let me give you a star. Let me give you a sticker. How about this happy face? And immediately, in fourth grade, they make sure that there's pet predators there to break your children down. That's when they start yelling at your children. That's when your children start being vilified. The male children learn that their penis is bad. The female children learn that male penises are bad. And it goes back and forth. But all that time before that, they were being built up and up and up so that the ego, super ego, and identity, or id, could be created in the first place in order for them to start busting them apart and breaking that child. And that is the action of a biogenesis, away from mind, life, mind, and soul. But the function of these things is what it is and you're seeing now the accountability that comes with that and, and I, I'm so thankful for accountability but I would like to see um, you know more uh, egregious efforts on these predators because they they deserve nothing less than than that kind of attention and that kind of um, presentation for the other pedophiles because uh, it can't stop fast enough for me yeah well i mean the problem is we have gurus out there teaching them one way to ro roam and 
You know, of course, the, the states teaching them their way to Rome. And, right, and that's and what those agents are It there. all leads to Rome. That's what those agents are there for, that Craig Kurt. Don't hold them accountable or anything. Mm -hmm. Why, it'd be too hard. Yep. It'd be just too hard to uh, divest title and, and hold them accountable to the restricted principles of sovereign immunity. Yep. Which I'm not even sure what that means because my, my education level is too high. Well, if you want to know, last night on the Bowen Rocker Show, right here on Revolution Radio, and later I'll play it on uh, No Borders as well, I'll get it up on the pod, but uh, last night you went into depth on the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity, the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act, yeah. uh, jury justionis and, and related, and... Um, and the Commerce Clause. And the Commerce how, Clause. Yeah, how ties it to the... You know, the U.S. Commerce Clause, but, you know, which under the Atlantic Charter of the U.S. Congress has world dominion, so how does that not affect uh, somebody in Scotland? It absolutely affects somebody in Scotland. It absolutely affects somebody in Australia, Japan, China, Russia, uh, Crimea, Syria. It's it's all a show out there, folks, on the in the mainstream media. The, you know the, the the controversy, the conflict you you see is nothing more than a, a show being put on uh, to create intelligence in your eyes, so you believe that these countries have separate and uh, you know laws and things are going under which which i mean the laws themselves the local laws may vary but it all goes back into uh it all boils down to offsetting congressional bankruptcy uh you know from the from the bench or that judge and he's the bank and he's throwing human beings in their special deposits to offset their congressional bankruptcy absolutely how they get your consent is just a variation on a theme and that's what it's all about. Psychology, psychiatry, the use of psychiatry, lysing the mind. That's what psychiatry is. It's lysing the mind, tearing it apart, splitting it apart through the uh, variance on trauma, which is actually a technique, uh, shock doctrine uh, related things. You know, if you've got a judge Moses up there telling you, you all are killing each other and stealing each other's wives and asses immediately you're like oh my god we are and he says yeah I'm a judge and you're like oh wow what's a judge and so then it explains to you what a judge is or what it's supposed to do and you're like wow how much is it and they're like oh it's just Leviticus which is the action of taxation and that is the entire manifest the doctrine of a biogenesis exodus which means away from God into Leviticus or the doctrine of d d uh, Democritus, democratic theory, constitutional theory, and it, that it it just it's over and over again as the CIA production company infiltrates a quote country before it's a country, the CIA will jump on the ground there, produce a civil war, say oh they hate each other, we gotta save them, we gotta save them, and immediately they go in there and offer them a constitution after it's the CIA. The United States Incorporated killing human beings, gassing them to death. Syrian children, 1,500 Syrian children last fall when they started this crap. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's quite sad. Millions upon millions upon millions died in wars at the behest of their king slash attorney ruler. Absolutely. Over the hundreds of years. And, you know, when... What, how much does it take for you guys to get it? You know, I mean. We didn't have you before. You know, it took me a long time. So I didn't have you back then. I had really mean, mean teachers that wore me out front. You know, we're, we're harsh taskmasters. But they really Oh, were. I know. And people love their <laughs> entertainment, boy. They don't, they don't really care too much to hear all that that uh, hardcore uh, truth and, and oh it's just a conspiracy theory when you read it out of their treaties and constitutions and stuff that's just a conspiracy theory yeah. we gotta go yell at Bilderbergers that's what we gotta do get at it oh that's another thing that you covered recently too is is uh, Bilderbergers and, and all mm. of these things it makes me hungry thinking about the Bilderbergers 
I like to build me a nice burger. Of course, it's getting awful hard now with the FDA and recalling all that meat and stuff. And Cutting the supply, increasing the demand, and that's another aspect of inflation. Well, let's go ahead and I'll throw out this story here. Maybe you want to elaborate on it. Try to do one last educational jolt here. And over at Bloomberg.com, Morgan Stanley broker charged in Post-It Insider Scheme. A Morgan Stanley broker and a law firm employee. It's really the same thing. Right, because Morgan Stanley is the law firm bank. They were charged with insider trading in a scheme that included passing tips on notes and napkins that a middleman swallowed under the big clock in Grand Central Terminal. Oh, yeah, they've been pushing this one for a long time. Oh, so th yeah, this is the older story, yeah, I know, so I know. This is actually from March 19th of this year. Yeah, conspiracy theory here. And um, But it's important here to see how this, how they write this up here at, at Doomberg. <laughs> They're just so secretive. They're not doing it right. Your face is by charging you from the bench, the bank. Yeah, 28 U.S.C. 453 <laughs> isn't, you know, right there for everybody to find or yeah. anything. Yeah, they're eating, they're eating post-it notes it's, and napkins. It's, you know, it's a conspiracy that duties has to do with, uh, you know, monies and stuff. Right. Uh, Stephen Metro, 40, the managing clerk at Simpson Teacher in Bartlett, LLP in New York was accused of stealing confidential data on 13 corporate transactions and tipping a friend who passed it to broker Vladimir Edelman, 42. And remember, 42 is the answer to the universal question. Absolutely, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe. According to an arrest complaint in U.S. Court in Newark, New Jersey, uh, Metro stole data from Simpson's teachers computers and gave it to the middlemen of New York bars and coffee shops according to the US Securities and Exchange Commission which also sued the men. Edelman traded from February 2009 to February 2013 for himself, family, friends and clients in a scheme that made more than 5.6 million in illicit profit, yeah. prosecutors said. They didn't make anything on the back end as attorneys and, and bankers banking human beings or anything. No, no. there's none of that. Uh, court, you know, uh, a registry investment system there. Yeah. Was it Chris or something? Yeah. Uh, in his meetings with the middleman, Metro, uh, okay, uh, see, I read that already, w would pass inside information by typing the names of companies involved in transactions on his mobile form, phone, according to the SEC. Metro pointed to the names or ticker symbols on his phone to tell the middleman which company was being bought or sold. Edelman would meet the middleman near the large clock at Grand Central and show him a post-it note or a napkin with the stock or ticker symbol of the company to be acquired, the SEC said. The middleman then chewed up and then sometimes ate, with <laughs> Edelman watching, the post-it note or napkin to destroy evidence of the tip, the agency said in his complaint. The men appeared in court where the magistrate judge set bail at $1 million each. Good. Oh, that's boy. That's funny. You know, well, that's, that that, that's back in March, you yeah. know. And, what a presentation. Oh, uh, it goes on. Two brokerages. Um, he began his illegal trading at Oppenheimer and Company. Uh, yeah, but, okay. Um... What do you want to do another one? We got time? Yeah, do we have any time? I Let's see. If I read real quick, which is sometimes a task for me, OPQS Sports Director Brian Holm admits he has been charged with having sex with a minor. Mega Farmer Quick Step Sports Director Brian Holm had, has admitted that he has been charged with having sex with a child aged under 12. 51 oh. year old decided to come forward after several news. Outlets in Denmark reported yesterday that a famous sporting figure from the country had been charged with the offense, without giving a name, according to the Extra Blade. And, uh, yeah, so that's sick enough there. See, the age of consent in Denmark is 15 years. With anyone convicted of having sex with a child below the age 
liable to a jail term of up to eight years, including 12 years where the victim is aged under 12. You know, the attorneys are still renting the kids' bodies, though, with that process. Right. right. When they use these pedophiles, these predators, really need to be just gotten rid of. Get more for eternity or whatever then, they're going to do to get them away from children. And then? Yeah. Something. Um, yeah, if you, you don't know, get rid of them, it's then always and then. Right. Well, this, um, the Netherlands, it's really nice to see this occurring in the Netherlands where children have been defined and the elderly have been defined in recent years as useless bread gobblers. The consensus has been that you know, the, the rate of death for the elderly is astronomical there since the assisted suicide But attorneys suicide live law. forever, it seems like. Right, because they're convincing human beings that they're useless. And these the elderly in, in the Netherlands are choosing assisted suicide because they feel useless when their productivity lags. That does not indicate uselessness. And that's the end of the show, folks. We'll be back here on Saturday. And then... With Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, as well as simulcasting on No Borders Radio and tiernasor.com. Thank you, everybody. Be well. Thank you, both.